let us now talk about the aortic arch arteries. Let us now take the aortic arch arteries. Okay, as initially we have uh, the two dorsal aorta. Now, dorsal aorta, the name itself is suggesting they are present dorsally. So, we have the two dorsal aorta and we have the developing heart tube in the front. So, these are the two dorsal aorta behind. Let us say these are the two dorsal aorta behind and we have a developing heart tube present. So, there is and these developing, this developing heart tube, all this truncus, all this uh, uh, primitive atrium, primitive ventricle and the truncus arteriosus portion, that heart tube is anteriorly and dorsal aorta posteriorly. They will communicate with each other, they will communicate with each other with the pharyngeal arches. So, we have pharyngeal arch arteries and we have six pharyngeal arches and every single pharyngeal arch will give passage to the artery which will connect this heart tube to this dorsal aorta. And this is what we are going to discuss now, the arch arteries and their development. So, let us look at the pharyngeal arch arteries and their development. So, topic is the arch arteries So, we have the two dorsal aorta, right and left dorsal aorta. Now, may I ask you to, to draw everything dotted so that whatever will persist, whatever will persist will only dark that and uh, rest we will leave it like that only. So, just in the beginning let us draw everything dotted only. So, this is the right dorsal aorta. And that is the left dorsal aorta. So, let us say these are the right and the left dorsal aorta. There we have developing heart tube. What is the cranial part of the heart tube? Starting from sinus venosus, what was the cranial part? The truncus arteriosus. Cranial to truncus arteriosus, we have aortic sac. If I will say this is the aortic sac, so if we have this aortic sac here. Aortic sac is having two horns, the right and the left horn of aortic sac. This is the right and the left horn, I am not even writing right and left, that is the right and the left horn of aortic sac. And these are the arch arteries which are connected to them. So, we have the The first, the second, the third, the fourth, fifth, and let us say the sixth arch artery. The first, we are drawing it dotted all, uh, and then we will only dark those arteries which will persist. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So, these are the arch arteries passing through the pharyngeal arches, these are the arch arteries. So, dorsal aorta, this is the developing heart tube, the cranial end of the heart tube, we having the aortic sac with the right horn and the left horn of aortic sac 
and this six arch arteries there. Just take your time and draw this thing first. Let us start with the major artery, the arch of aorta. Now, I will draw the arch of aorta and you tell me the developmental component of arch of aorta. Guys, if this is the arch of aorta, there we have the arch of aorta. So, if this is the arch of aorta, where the arch of aorta is derived from? So, starting with the arch of aorta, what are the developmental component of arch of aorta starting from here? What is this? This is the left horn of the aortic sac. Which arch artery is this? This is the fourth arch artery and what is this? This is a piece of left dorsal aorta, left horn of aortic sac left fourth arch artery, left dorsal aorta. So, components are, de developmental components are left horn of aortic sac, left fourth arch artery and left dorsal aorta. So, these are the three developmental component of the arch of aorta. If the question is on arch of aorta, you say it is from the left horn of aortic sac, it is from the left fourth arch artery and it is by the left dorsal aorta, the portion of the left dorsal aorta. If this is arch of aorta, what are the major branches of arch of aorta? What are the main branches coming out of arch of aorta? We have the left subclavian, the left common carotid and brachiocephalic artery. Brachiocephalic artery has to go toward this side, toward the right side because it again has to divide into subclavian and the, the common carotid. So, first let us take the brachiocephalic only. So, brachiocephalic artery will be by the right horn of the aortic sac, that is all. Brachiocephalic artery is by the right horn of the aortic sac. right horn of the aortic sac. Coming to subclavian artery, now subclavian artery, now before the subclavian artery let us take the common carotid. Uh, remember in the head and neck we said common carotid artery will extend as the internal carotid artery, vasculogenesis. Common carotid artery will continue as the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery will come out as a bud it will come out as a branch, as a bud. Let me highlight this thing here. This is the one. and let us say this is the external carotid artery bud on this. If this is a ECA bud and I, 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 can, I can do this on both the side, it is exactly the same, same thing here from the third arch artery. With the ECA bud, this portion will form the common carotid artery and rest is the internal carotid artery, same thing. The common carotid and the internal carotid. So, if, if the question is common carotid artery is derived from where? 
common carotid artery on both the side is by the proximal part of third arch artery on both the side it is by the proximal part of third arch artery on both the side the common carotid as you can see is by the proximal part of third arch artery whereas the distal part of third arch artery and the cranial part of dorsal aorta is forming the internal carotid internal carotid is by the distal part of third arch artery plus the cranial part of dorsal aorta both the side that's why i'm not using the word right and the left so the proximal part of third arch artery forms the common carotid distal part of third arch artery and the cranial part of dorsal aorta from here till here this is forming the internal carotid we don't have to worry about this external carotid because external carotid artery will come out as a bud it will develop as a bud from the third arch artery So common carotid, internal carotid, external carotid, these are formed. Subclavian artery. Now the question is on the subclavian artery. Why? Because subclavian artery on the left side, it is by this branch called as the left seventh cervical intersegmental artery. This is the left seventh cervical. intersegmental artery so no problem with the left subclavian i'm saying this left subclavian artery left subclavian artery is by the left seventh cervical intersegmental artery initially we have from the dorsal aorta we have these arteries called as the segmental arteries the seventh cervical segmental artery on the left side is forming the subclavian this cervical segmental artery was actually the branch of dorsal aorta but this piece of dorsal aorta is utilized to form the arch of aorta so i can say now this is the branch of arch of aorta so seventh cervical intersegmental artery will form the subclavian artery on the left side and the question is asked from the subclavian artery because it's not the same story on the on the right side on the right side let's say if, even if we have the left seventh cervical intersegmental artery but that's not coming from the brachiocephalic artery if this is the let's say this is the seventh cervical intersegmental artery on this side also this is right seventh cervical intersegmental artery the problem is this right cervi seventh cervical intersegmental artery if it has to form the subclavian it should come from brachiocephalic this is brachiocephalic here so to come from the brachiocephalic we need we'll utilize this fourth arch artery as well we'll utilize this fourth arch artery as well and that's the major difference the right subclavian artery is having one two and three developmental component compared to the left side where is where we only have one there are three developmental component on this side right subclavian artery 
is derived from three developmental component. Number one is the right fourth arch artery, right fourth arch artery, the same fourth arch artery which is used to form the arch of head on this side, on that side it is forming the subclavian. Right dorsal iota, number two is the right dorsal iota. And number three is right seventh cervical intersegmental artery. Right seventh cervical intersegmental artery. So that's the main difference between on the right and the left side. If let us say these are the developing lung buds, we said respiratory buds, remember respiratory buds are coming from the foregut. So, these are the lung buds or those respiratory buds and then we have this proximal part of sixth arch artery invading it. That will form the pulmonary artery. So, pulmonary arteries are from the proximal part, the proximal part of sixth arch artery. By the proximal part of sixth arch artery forming the pulmonary artery, proximal part of sixth arch artery forms the pulmonary artery. So, what is this? What is this connection between the pulmonary trunk and the arch of aorta? This is the ductus arteriosus. This is ductus arteriosus. So, guys, ductus arteriosus, ductus arteriosus will give rise to or will be derived from the distal part, distal part of sixth arch artery distal part of left 6th arch artery, sorry, distal part of left 6th arch artery, distal part of left 6th arch artery forms the ductus arteriosus, the one which will become ligamentum arteriosum, the ductus arteriosus is by the distal part of left 6th arch artery and rest all these arteries which are, are dotted over there, they will persist, they might have some remnant like the remnant of the first arch artery is maxillary artery, just I have to tell you the remnant over there. So, the remnant of the first arch will be the maxillary artery, remnant of the second arch artery will be the stapedial artery. So, please note that if they ask you what is the artery for first arch and second arch, maxillary artery is the artery of first arch, stapedial artery which is a remnant of second arch artery is the artery of second arch. <coughs> 